friends, Dean here with Escape to Gaming. Sorry I haven't been uh, in front of the camera in a while. I've been fairly sick, run down, and I've had some health issues that have kind of keep coming up, the same recurring health problems. And so it's been very tough to uh, to make videos. I've just been very busy with work and all that. But it's something I have to address. I feel I look like hell. I feel like hell. I haven't slept very good. Um, <clears throat> but there's something that I, I need to address, and this, that's this new Far Cry five game and I, I put some things on Twitter and on Facebook <clears throat> about it uh, just because I'm I have an opinion I'm one of the last people that really cares about certain things in life and if I have an opinion on something one way or the other I'll comment on it you know <clears throat> uh, I see games I like I get excited and I put it in fact now initially I saw a couple little brief clips of um, this you know Hope Montana and people running out in the fields and and I thought it reminded me of the movie, um, what's it called, uh, it's called Thunderbolt and Lightfoot with uh, Clint Eastwood and Jeff Bridges. And it has that same feel. They had a little country church in a field and uh, there was a, <clears throat> they had this idealistic kind of little setting in Montana around a little schoolhouse and a church and all this money that was hidden during this great robbery. And that kind of, that was the vibe I was getting initially from it. I had no idea what it was. Some people thought, oh, it'll be an Old West thing. <clears throat> and that's fine. Everyone's going to interpret those initial little video clips certain ways. But you could clearly see it was in America, obviously. And I had no problem with that. I love that area. In fact, if it wasn't for the weather and the snow, I love Wyoming and Montana. Those are like idealistic, all-American, wholesome settings. I mean, if you think of America at its best, beautiful open plains and little towns that are like, you know, something out of the 50s or the 60s, and kind of that return to just kind of down-to-earth uh, American <clears throat> values and from farming and, and uh, um, guys are, I'm not into hunting and killing animals, but <clears throat> guys that like to go out hunting and all that stuff. It, it's kind of like a very <clears throat> idealistic view <clears throat> of a, a portion of America. Like I said, it wasn't for the snow. I, I could easily retire there and buy a nice house and have a four-wheel drive. <clears throat> and just enjoy it, have a beautiful deck and enjoy that whole idealistic scenery and lifestyle, <clears throat> that country living. Uh, I like living in the city now, I like the conveniences like most people do, and I, I don't know if I'm into roughing it way out in the country in the cold winters and all that, <clears throat> but it's a, it's a nice scene. So I, I like, I was attracted to it <laughs> based on that. And then they show, now I'm not, not going to show the trailer because I, I don't need any grief with copyright strikes and, you know, Ubisoft taking down the video or whatever, getting a strike on my thing. I, I will show <clears throat> some scenes from it. Um, obviously, when they saw the first reveal of like the part of the logo, they showed kind of a closely cropped section of a bigger picture. <clears throat> and that's it clearly is mocking uh, the, the, the famous Last Supper painting um, <clears throat> that's made popular. You know, it's been around, uh, God... I don't know, hundreds of years, I don't know when the painting was done. But it's a very famous painting. The painting has been mocked before, and other uh, rock bands and things have mocked it, whatever. <clears throat> so, it, and again, I'm, I'm, I'll preface this by saying I, I, have, I can count on probably literally one hand of all the hundreds of subscribers and people that I interact with on social media, I can count on one hand, realistically, my Christian friends, uh, I can call them Christian brothers, I suppose, that, that share the same faith. Now, within Christianity, there's many offshoots. Some are very strict Catholic and Orthodox, and there's some that are your snake wrestling, alligator wrestling, you know, Bible belt, um, you know, tent revival meaning, Pentecostals. <clears throat> you've got your Southern Baptist. You've got um, uh, Seventh-day Adventist, uh, um, Episcopals. I mean, um, uh, my wife and I have, have been to a bunch of Lutheran churches where she's German and that was what she was, the faith she was raised in. So I'm not real big on organized religion at all. I, I don't go to church anymore. I don't, I don't affiliate myself with any particular religion. Um, so I have no axe to grind there, but my, my issue is, is that it's something that is close to my belief system and my faith. <clears throat> And so right off the bat, they're showing an idealistic scene of America, the Montana area, obviously. Beautiful, idealistic scene. You've got, you know, white people, all of them white, 
obviously. Now, these are, again, I feel that these things are being demonized, as, as I like to call it. <clears throat> then they've got what obviously is the Bible. You've got a guy that's knelt down in front of him, is probably about to be tortured or killed. He's got sinner carved in his back with a knife. So obviously these are some, you know, whack job extremist Christians. And people can think of something like the uh, Branch Davidian, their offshoot of the uh, radical Seventh-day Adventist movement many years ago during the Clinton administration. <clears throat> that was um, Janet Reno. It ended disastrously <coughs> at the time, but it, it was a mess anyway. And, and there's many, lots of these whacked out types of people that take a, a, a simple belief. The Bible is based on love and compassion and giving. It's not about punishment and torture, but people like to take things out of the Old Testament and, and they, they turn them into this <clears throat> uh, kind of a, an us versus them. Well, we're the good people. We don't sin. You know, We don't do this. We don't do that. I, I mean, <clears throat> I, I fail every day as a Christian. I, I sin. I make mistakes. I, I see things that I probably shouldn't look at. <clears throat> I have feelings like any other person, but I do have. I admit, but there is a hard line that I draw. There's certain things I won't cheat on my wife. I'm not going to lie uh, to my friends and my family. <clears throat> uh, I don't steal. I won't do. I have very solid convictions, and a lot of them actually align probably with the Ten Commandments. You know. Now I, I have violated the Ten Commandments <laughs> many, many, many times, and I, again, I'm not pushing my views on anyone. I'm not trying to sell Christianity to you. I'm just expressing how I feel about it. So right away I see, you know, white people, Christians, an ideal area in America that represents your typical white right-wing Christian, probably Trump supporters. I, I don't talk about Trump on my social media. I never bring him up. I have um, my personal views about Trump, some things I like about him and some things I don't. There's some things I admire about his business abilities and some things that I, I think he should keep his pie hole shut. <clears throat> but he is who he is. He happens to be our president right now and I do agree with some of the things <clears throat> that he advocates. <clears throat> some of them. Uh, <clears throat> but we're living in a time where there's a great divide between the right and the left, between Christians and non-believers. I mean, I, I can't even find a Christian to save my life. No one believes in anything anymore. We've, I've never seen a, a, a level of nihilism and self-indulgent narcissism like I have today. It is rampant. And it's almost as if popular culture has become so popular that people can't think up for themselves anymore. Everyone looks the same. Everyone talks the same. Everyone has the same convictions and feelings, and God forbid you say something outside of that, you'll be ostracized. Who knows? I, I could lose half of my subs because of this video. But you know what? If I don't make this video, I feel like I'm a cheap sellout. I, I have to say this, um, and the best analogy I could give you, imagine that you had a, a, a girlfriend. Let's say, you know, you, oh, and again, I mean, this is whether you're homosexual, you can or heterosexual, it doesn't matter, whether it's your boyfriend or girlfriend, let's say that you have someone that you really care about and love, and you're in school, let's say it's in high school or college, and you've met a lot of people over the years, and we've had, you know, ups and downs with relationships, hasn't really worked out, but all of a sudden you find someone that you really, really are aligned with, that you just, you've never had an affinity for anyone like this person, all of a sudden this person becomes very special to you, now you put them up on a pedestal, you, you maybe you even worship them. You, your whole life is about them and becoming one with them, and and you like to share everything together. And you've got this feeling that is, it's indescribable. And someone else sees that same person and goes, "So what? You fall in love with that? I, I don't feel any love for her or for him or whatever." But for you, that's special. You don't have to explain yourself to anyone. You feel what you feel. It's the same thing with me with, with Christianity. I, I love uh, my Lord. I love the Bible. I, I don't shake it at anyone. I never point my finger at anyone saying, you're wrong, you should do this, you shouldn't do that. I, I, I don't believe in that at all. That's where I draw the line, and I differ from organized religion in a lot of churches that, that take this very pompous, self-righteous approach in an us-versus-them <clears throat> theology, and that is not the love of Jesus is about. Jesus was a good person. He really did good works, good things, um, and it's 
sad how over history man has twisted his what he was trying to convey even to the Pharisees and the very Jews and the people that w were persecuting him he tried to turn the other cheek and show love and compassion towards his fellow man and to, and through many wonderful analogies and examples he became someone that I believed in. I grew up believing him. I shouldn't after having it force fed down my throat. If anyone should feel like they were trapped in a, in a, in a heavy religious legalistic uh, upbringing, it's me. I, I should be the first person to be an agnostic or an atheist. <clears throat> but I'm not. For whatever reason, I believe from the very first day I have no doubts. So anyway, getting back to my analogy, let's say all of a sudden you've got this person you're in love with, it's wonderful, um, that, and both of you are kind of known in your school or college or whatever. All of a sudden, one day you go in there, and all over the lockers, in the hallways, on the walls outside, and someone has spray-painted, scratched in the lockers, your friend or your girlfriend or boyfriend's name, and carved it in there. You know, this person's a slut. What a cunt. What a whore. Uh, what a bastard this person is. You want a good time? You want to fuck this person? I sure did. Here's her number, you know, and all. And it, imagine how you'd feel. Now, this is a pretty extreme example, but no. And other people go, "Hey, dude, don't get so by her. It's just graffiti." I mean, I, don't take it so personal. It's just someone's opinion. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that that's the actual what, what the actual case or what's really going on. But it would still bother you because something that you hold dearly and cherish is mocked to such a degree publicly and openly. And then you see people like, all right, that's cool, right on, you know. She is a fucking cunt. She is a bitch. Or he's an asshole. He deserves that. Yeah, I'm glad he's being shamed publicly. <clears throat> it adds even more insult to injury. I don't know if that analogy uh, does any justice to what I'm saying, but th this is how I felt when I saw the imagery of what was coming down. And right away, I, again, after 50 years of living on the planet's, I read between the lines. I, I, I see things for what they are. Now, there's many movies from Deliverance that kind of made a mockery of hillbillies and rednecks. A great movie with Burt Reynolds and <clears throat> Ned Beatty and some other actors, and Ronnie Cox. A uh, movie Dead Bang I saw opening day with Don Johnson. He plays an L.A. cop working with the feds to track down these um, <clears throat> white supremacists and uh, Arizona or New Mexico or somewhere. I haven't got him seen the movie in years. I have it on DVD. It's actually a pretty good film. Great movie. I'm all for that. I'm, and I've played games. I have Manhunt right here. Manhunt 1. And it shows like every type of whack job and fetish. And it has white supremacists. All these different thugs and gangs that you take over. I have no issue with that. You know, there's many people that, that take the, the U.S. Constitution perhaps too far, they're preparing for World War III and all this stuff. I mean, <clears throat> I, I, I can understand having, there's elements of that, and there's elements of that in GTA V. I've got over there, there was a, they had a cult that was up in the hills, and I, I remember flying a helicopter over there once, and I had everyone shooting at me. The helicopter crashed. <laughs> I didn't know whether it was a, a, a bunch of cultists up in the hills. Uh, and I later went down in there and wiped out every one of them. <clears throat> so there, there's elements of it. Now, Rockstar, to their credit, will demonize everyone. They'll demonize the right, the left, the young, the old, uh, the believers, the non-believers, everyone. And so because they do it with such a broad brush, it makes it, it, it it's almost like it's, it's, it's what I call satire. Satire <clears throat> is it makes fun of many of the things that people take so seriously in life from trying to, you know, middle-aged guys like me trying to stay young. I mean, they really did a great job of mocking all of that in GTA V. <clears throat> and even in games like Manhunt, where they show all these different, you know, clans. They had this, uh, you know, all these different uh, weird uh, gangs that you would, you know, they're into in different types of things. And uh, <clears throat> in some, there was one group in a trailer park called Tra Trailer Trash, I think was the name of the level or whatever. Uh... <clears throat> And it had a bunch of white supremacists with kind of like a KKK thing on it, you know. If it was just the KKK where it's just, it's almost a political uh, thing, I, I can understand it. But it's the fact that they take, if you watch the trailer, I didn't do this video, so I'm going to give it, I'll give it a chance. I don't want to say anything yet based off from one image. Let me watch the, the reveal. Let me see the trailer and see what the game is really about. So I waited, and this morning I got up and then I saw the trailer, and then I saw some people's breaking down of the trailer. 
and you can clearly see that it's a mockery of the fact that they're he's taking elements out of a book that I hold dear and and you know taking a woman down to baptize her and apparently he's going to drown her that's probably that image where they showed a woman or a person face down with a white robe floating down the river they're obviously going to kill her and so they're mocking you know baptizing someone in the holy spirit they're mocking um some people that you know take their 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 their, their sins seriously there was a, a movie called seven i saw when it first came out with brad pitt i can't even remember who was in it it was a really disturbing film i don't I think I have that one in my collection. I think I have it on VHS, but not on DVD. But <clears throat> it's, a, it's a very dark movie, and it deals with the seven sins. And they kind of sh show that here. But these are people that are like, they're clearly serial killers, <clears throat> or they're people that are taking elements of it <clears throat> perhaps too far. <clears throat> and they're building a whole movie around that. But this is taking what looks like the perfect American town with red, white, and blue American flag flying, which I'm very proud to fly the American flag myself. And if I lived in Montana or Wyoming, I probably would have one in front of my house or garage or whatever. I, I, I like that setting. So they're taking all of that. They're taking you know a kind of a, a really nice country setting, which I like. They're taking my my fellow white brothers and people here in America in the heartland <clears throat> and mocking them. Um, you know, then they're taking a church and they're taking this cultist. He obviously is a cultist, but because he's doing it behind the Bible <clears throat> uh, and mocking um, a lot of the Christian tenements that I believe in, it, it's it's and in this climate, everyone you, you know the game's going to. So the thing the thing that attract this that I saw first when I first saw this, I, I didn't even know that it was coming. All of a sudden, I saw this guy who's on Twitter, a, a popular insider. I think Carrick at Angry Center of Gaming followed him, mentioned him in, on one of his, he had interviewed him or something, and I, oh, okay, I'll follow him. The guy obviously knows a lot of inside gaming things. I'll get some good stuff. He posted the initial image, and he says, right now in this climate, this should sell real well. This is going to do really well in sales. And he's right. That, that I think that's what bothered me about it the most, is that it's because of the hatred towards Christians, towards white people, especially with a social justice warrior, mindset that is so prevalent. We are living in such a progressive age where there, there literally is no counterculture. In the old days, the liberals were the good guys. I mean, the 60s, the people that were anti-war, which I am, I'm very anti-war, uh, they were people that were for peace, for civil rights, so that women can vote and black people can vote and should be held in the same love and respect as anybody else. I believe in all of those things. So there was a time that the counterculture was younger people coming of age that didn't want to go to Vietnam and die senselessly or kill their fellow man over in another country. Uh, you see that portrayed in the this TV show MASH during the Korean War. There are people that are obviously conscientious objectors that are stuck in this hellish situation and that's what makes it interesting. It's a biting satire of anti-war satire within the arena of war. It's fascinating. So <clears throat> I had the intellectual capacity to kind of see through it all but the thing that bothers me is that this comes out at a time where there is so much hatred towards, again, I'm not a, a big Trump supporter, but people, the fact that Trump won and that a conservative base has won this time around, who knows, it could go back to a progressive president uh, in four years. I, I don't know. But I'm someone that has, I'm a libertarian, but I do have a lot of, um, Christian and conservative values. As a father, as a parent, as a business owner, naturally anything that's heavy-handed with uh, lots of over-regulation with my industry, with my business, bothers me. I don't like, uh, like I said, I don't care for many of the same things that other people see, but I do like the fact that, we're, that, that Trump is trying to do something to protect our country and our culture and our language and our borders. I think that's important. I, I don't. My daughter was, and, and my granddaughter, who's five years old now, was living in Redlands, literally minutes from where this San Bernardino terrorist attack took place. The day that happened, she happened to be down at my grand, at her grandmother's visiting. She easily could have been there and could have been killed in that in that massacre in that terrorist attack. And thank God that she wasn't. And once that happened, I, I woke up and I, I said. We need to really do something about our borders. We get a someone has to. What's being said in these mosques and churches around our country? If there's anything, I don't care if they're Christians, if they're Buddhists, 
Hindus, anyone that is advocates hate, intolerance, and killing people and sawing their heads off. So it's like, God forbid that they, uh, <clears throat> someone make a, a, a video game about another religious sect, which actually is very concerning and very dangerous in the world that we live in, and is creating just death and suffering everywhere. There, right now in Africa, in Nigerian places, there are massive Christians, innocent Christians, they're just singing about Jesus in little churches, and they're trying to, the Christians are going there, and they're trying to bring clothing and food and do something for the people of those areas, and they're being slaughtered by the thousands. No one says anything. God forbid we do a, a game about that and talk about what could be, I consider, a much worse danger than a couple whack job fundamentalists. That every, you know, couple decades, someone comes out of the woodwork with a gun, God forbid, and kills someone. There have been a few uh, fundamentalist Christians that have gone off the rails. There's no question about it. It's an embarrassment to me. I feel sickened by it. And I'll be the first one to speak out against it when I see it. But and to me, this paints a, a much broader brush, a much broader picture that I, I'm just, I, I, I can't condone. So I'm obviously going to boycott. It's a shame. I love Far Cry 3. I haven't played the second one yet. And I, I love Far Cry 4. i got about 35, 34 hours in both. I haven't finished either one of them. Great games. But there was nothing that was mocking or making fun of the, of the Hindu beliefs. In fact, it had a lot of beautiful, like, dream sequences and... Uh, stuff like that in there. And if there was a, a game that, if, if, if let's say that they came up Far Cry 5 and it took a bunch of Buddhist monks and made them into, you know, uh, serial killers or something, I, I wouldn't like that either. I have many Buddhist friends that have a very wonderful faith and belief system and believe that everything is, whole, is holy and, and, and everything that's alive from the insects to the animals around us, it's all part of, you know, their, their existence and it's a lot of very beautiful things in those religions that, that I actually embrace some of. I have a lot of respect for I would be just as angry if I saw another, what I know to be a good faith, being ripped apart and demonized <clears throat> in a bad way. They don't do that. With Far Cry, you know, um, three had pirates. They were obviously pirates on the island. Uh, I never saw how the game wrapped up. I'm anxious to finish it. And this guy here, I mean, there's nothing heavily religious about him. He just was like a warlord, as far as I could tell. And he was, there were a lot of innocent people that were in the middle of it. And, you know, maybe there are a lot of those same elements are going to be in this new one. I don't know. But based on the marketing alone, I, I have to boycott it. And I will. And I hope that my fellow brothers and uh, fellow Christian friends will do the same thing. Because it, it really, I'm tired of this heavy, progressive, left-wing element forcing th their idea of ha hating white people, this reverse racism, <clears throat> demonizing good people like myself who wouldn't hurt anyone. I, I don't hurt animals. I certainly don't hurt other people. I have love for all people around me and all things as long as they come into my environment and my world with peace and harmony and love. Hey, come on in, brother. I'll, you hungry? I'll get you some to eat. But I don't like people that come into our environment that want to kill or convert you. That, that I don't like. And it has no place within our, the borders of our country or the borders of my friends in the UK or any other country. If people want to go into another country, take advantage of their system, and then kill their, those people with their own resources, it, it's, I, I can't condone it, whether it's a 9-11 or anything else. It doesn't mean that I condone... Uh, war in Iraq that we need to be by posted something about okay sure that's a solution let's go over and bomb the Middle East into the Stone Age I, I'm not for bombing anyone I don't want to see any I think we should be uninvolved with those areas leave those people alone it's it's sad that this world is so fucked up over money and oil and God knows what else I, I can't even begin to, to fathom wh whether I have a fully un understanding of what's really going on we who knows what the hell is really going on? All I know is that <clears throat> I come home, I want to play a video game and get lost. And I like adventures, and I like a good story. <clears throat> but if when I see something that I hold dear, mocked, and when I know people are going to see this, yeah, these fucking Christians, I can't wait to kill these cocksuckers. And when I <laughs> hear and see stuff like that, I've already had people on Twitter this morning. One guy made a video about being butthurt over it. People are getting butthurt over these, uh, you know, Far Cry Five ads, that's bullshit, you know. And a guy came at me this morning that I telling me, dictating to me, 
that I need to get over it, that I should have any right to, to get upset. I go, Are you, well, you obviously have no love for the Bible or Christianity. He goes, that's right, I'm an atheist. I said, well, then you certainly don't understand where I'm coming from. And furthermore, you have no right to dictate to me how I should feel about something that I hold dear. So <clears throat> that's all I'm going to say on it. If you, know, you want to buy the game, go ahead and buy it and play it. I'm not going to tell you to enjoy that one because I, I think we should stay away from it. But <clears throat> I think anything that takes it to that level. Now, there are elements in Mafia 3 where they show the KKK, and I've already seen some of those levels in the game. <clears throat> That's great. They should show those elements of the South that have hurt black people and that have hurt, the, frankly, the, the very good name of a, a lot of good white people that lived in the same area. Not everyone down in those areas was a racist. And I have friends that are in the South now that are very anti-racist. And I, and I hold them dear. I'm like, well, good for you. That's <clears throat> I lived in the South, and because I had California plates, you wouldn't believe my car got keyed. I had Yankee go home, you know, painted on the outside of my apartment. I mean, I had a tremendous amount <laughs> of people that didn't like me that felt threatened by an outsider. And I, I just I moved to Florida to work and to take in the sunshine. I didn't see it at us. For, oh, I'm from the north, and I'm coming to, you know, intrude in your area. I just was there to work, and I accepted them all as, as brothers and fellow Americans, and I, I will never forget the discrimination as a, quote, Yankee that I got because I had California plates. I'm like, dude, I'm a neutral. I like the South. I did nothing against the South or the North. I, you know, I've been to the Civil War Museum in, in, in Atlanta, Georgia. I've seen the atrocities of our Civil War and what it was over, and it's horrendous. This country has ripped itself apart with racism, so many problems, but it doesn't mean that black people are bad or that white people are bad. We, we've got to stop this demonizing, and the left, progressive left, wants to create a division between the races, and there's no greater way than this uh, Far Cry 5. It, it demonizes, you know, uh, conservative, Christian, white folk, everything that I happen to be. I didn't choose to be those things, except Christ, being a Christian. That was a conscious choice. <clears throat> but it is what it is. This is my faith and my belief. But because no one believes in anything anymore, we're in such a nihilistic and dark time, <clears throat> I know this game is going to sell like hotcakes. So I, I can't tell you that to, oh, enjoy your game or enjoy this game, because I, I, I don't want to see anyone enjoy the mockery of something that I hold dear. So that's it in a nutshell. I, I felt I had to say something for the record because I've had even people on Twitter, Dean, you're going to do a video about this. I go, I'm really sick right now, dude. I don't feel well. My whole insides. I, I've been in and out of the doctors for for a couple months now <clears throat> with more tests. I'm in rough shape. Uh, problems with my insides, my stomach and colon, and again. And uh, it's a constant challenge. I burn the candle out at both ends. I'm tired. I've got so many rants I've been dying to do, and I just haven't had the time <clears throat> or the energy to do them. But this is one that I had to force myself to get out. So thanks for watching, guys. I, I hope you understand. I'm just saying this for the record. I don't want to get you know any hatred or problems. I don't want every people coming at me in the comment section. It's just my belief system. It's something that I believe in, and I have to make a stand. I believe that a man that won't stand for something will fall for anything. And that's one thing. I don't like to force my belief systems on people. But I have to speak for the record for the few of us out there that feel strongly about this one issue. And I thought maybe coming from me, something I could say could possibly enlighten you just to where you could understand another person's perspective. That's it. So thanks for watching, guys, and enjoy your games.